guys, this is Song of Production, aka in and I'm back in Akuroki Demon of the Fleeting Blossom, part 6, I think, I'm not entirely sure. And we're just gonna continue. The Nishihon Wanji Temple has been cooperating with the Choshu. Some of their run in the state there. Oh, I, why did it auto? Oh, yeah, I don't click that. I click that. If they support the Choshu, then that would make the Shinsen do me their enemy. Little wonder then that they would hardly welcome us with open arms. That meant a whole other level of difficulty. Asking for a place to stay was hard enough, but asking that from an enemy? I felt silent and sighed to continue as that if I never, I'd never spoken. No doubt they would be less than receptive of, of overtures. On the other hand, if we move into the Nishihan Wanji Temple, the Shoshi will have one less place to hide their agents. Oh! Of course! Not only was the location desirable, but taking the temple would mean the enemy's move that make the enemy's movement more difficult. Whatever problems we had acquiring the temple would likely be worth it. You don't think it's somewhat uncouched to something to use force against men of the cloth? There was no hiding his distaste for the idea. Hitikara's voice was level but firm as steel. The Choshu has used the temple to hide their men, and they couldn't have done that with the help of, without the help of the monks. I agree the Choshu must be dealt with, but this seems... His voice trailed off. Although he was clearly upset, there was little more he could say or do. I agree with Toshi, but I have to concede that Sana has a point. He nodded solemnly, apparently in deep thought. Impressive. Chief Kando, only a man with a truly open mind can be so considerate of both his enemies and his allies. Oh, but, well, it's kind of you to say, but I fear my behavior is simply imprudent, not open-minded. He blushed and coughed in an attempt to of match of not a match and said, Hichikara and Okita scowled in silence at the exchange. The man who had just spoke was Cap Kashitaro Ito, the new deputy commander. He had joined the Shinshengumi only recently. Kando had left Heisuke in Edo and returned early with Ito who, and some of his men who had come to join the Shinshengumi. He was reputedly a master of the uh, Hokushin Ito sword style and ran a school of his own. When Ito was introduced to the captains, none of them seemed particularly pleased with his addition to their ranks. No sooner had Ito and Kando left the room than they began to talk amongst themselves. Half I've heard Ito is an imperial nationalist. Why would someone such as him join the Asian room? He's like the Choshu, then. Ha. Huh. You really think someone like that can get along with us? Hichikata grunted and pursued his lips for a moment. He pursed his lips? Kando's a national, uh, loyalist. They might, uh, not agree on the Shogun and the, um, and the Emperor, but they're both nationalists through and through. They might disagree about who should run the country, but neither of them wanted a foreign nation exerting its control over their country. Besides, a loyalist without doubt, but he has Kondo is a loyalist without a doubt, but he has a few imperialist tendencies of his own. Perhaps the different factions weren't quite so staunchly divided as they may appear. Would Kondo and the Shinsengumi work for a future where the Shogunate controlled the country, but the Emperor was still treated with respect? That seemed like a solution that could make everyone happy. If that was the case, then Kondo's version of national loyalism was a wonderful thing. I figure the only one of us who'd uh, be very happy about about Ito showing up would be Stan, right? True, they do both practice Ito, right? He knows Ito too, doesn't he? And Stan's a bit of a loyalist. I wouldn't have guessed that Stan and Ito had so much in common. His expression didn't suggest he was particularly happy, though. Though he's smiling, but that's not important. <laughs> Yes, I have met Ito. He is well educated and a skilled orator. Such a gift is, su with such a diff gifted deputy commander, I suppose that the Shinsengumi has little need for a colonel. 
Sun Sanan's words hung in the air, heavy and awkward. I didn't understand the ranks of the Shinsengumi as far as I can, but as far as I can tell, a deputy commander outranked a colonel. The veto here, there's very little left for me to do. I hadn't thought of it that way. Sanan felt that Ito was a threat to his own position, an awkward silence all across the room. So? I don't like him. Okay, that was the first to speak. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's something about the way he looks at you. Exactly. I don't know uh, how to put it, but he's like sort of a pity, you know? Like he's looking down on you or something. There was a good deal of nodding and agreeing among the three, among the three of them, and a few moments while uh, while I sat and thought. Truth to be told, I didn't feel particularly comfortable around Deputy Commander Ito either. It wasn't that he was a bad person per se, only that he was, how to say, off-putting. Ito's thin smile had, sp had spread across his face when Sanan voiced his objection to Hitikata's plan, and now he turned and spoke. You always think of all the possibilities, Senan. I'm impressed, but I feel you may be overthinking this. It could be a problem, yes, but his tone was differential, but it didn't quite match his words. Don't you think a slightly greater problem would be that your left arm is utterly useless? You piece of shit! Oh my god, that was so harsh! Like, that, that was not even sugar-coated. It was just... Flat out harsh! Whatever warmth had remained in the room was abruptly gone. Of course, you needn't, you needn't be useless even if you can no longer serve as a soldier. I'm sure that your wit and foresight will continue to be a great asset to the Shinsengumi and myself. It was as if Ito had taken a knife and driven it straight into Sanan's heart. I saw his shoulders sag, almost as if he had been punched in the stomach, and all around the room, jaws were set and knuckles turned white. Perhaps I didn't hear you right, Ito. Ichika's voice was cold and sharp, like the sound of a blade sliding across a, across a whetstone. Then I'm smart, like you said. But more than that, he's a swordsman of the Shin, 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 Shin Gumi. He is not useless, and he is not replaceable. Ichigata's last words erupted from his mouth in a, mouth in a snarl, and there was no mistaking their meaning. Cut my arm is... He couldn't even bring himself to finish. No matter how much they may, might need a swordsman of his skills, Sanan could no longer wield a blade. They both knew his arm would never heal, and Ichigata's desperate defense of his friend had likely, had likely only made Sanan feel worse. Oh dear, that was terribly rude of me, truly there could be no better news than hearing your arms heal. Ito's smile fooled no one and Sanan felt silent. God damn it. He only muttered it under his breath, but I was close enough to hear. Too late, Hijikata had realized his mistake. This was the first time I'd seen Hijikata so worked up. He might have been harsh, but he al almost always protected an air of control. Perhaps Sanan's injury worried him enough to allow the mask to slip. Uh, um, Ito. Kanda was clearly choosing his words carefully in a nearly desperate attempt to change the subject. If you would care to, perhaps you might come and have a look at our training regimen. Ito's eyes narrowed and his mouth curled into a small smile. My, how thoughtful of you. Yes, I would love to have a look. Ah, the training room, a heavy sweat of men started straining to better themselves. Surely a delight. The sweat of men, yes. I suppose you have to have a point. The training room must grow rather musty. Ito uh, could be a very peculiar person. The two men left the room, chatting together as if nothing was wrong, all eyes to, and all eyes to it towards Sanan. Sanan, don't listen to that asshole, okay? And, and Sanan did nothing. He stood up silently and left the room. <laughs> I feel bad of him. For him. Even the men are avoiding him these days. What? It was the first I've heard of such a thing. Then again, I didn't normally see anyone but the captain. I had no idea. Well, he's kind of been a jerk lately. I imagine that's why. It wasn't hard uh, for me to see why they would feel that way. Science gotten even worse in the last several weeks. 
He wasn't always like that, you know. Back in the day, he was always acting like he was looking out for everybody. Yeah, he was real nice, or at least on the surface. Nothing left of that now. Do you really mean that? The way they spoke, it sounded uh, as if any kindness Sanon had shown was always bad. What the hell does Kondo see in that Edo guy? Okita and Hijikata had largely ignored Nakagura and Harada, but their faces were dark and stormy. It wasn't difficult to guess why. How the hell would I know? Probably just pulled the wool over Kondo's eyes with some well spoken bullshit. Then why don't you get rid of him, Hijikata? Tell him the Shinsen Gumi doesn't need him. Hijikata let out a frustrated sigh and pinched the bridge of his nose. No way Kondo would go for that. He adores it. Besides, when he joined, uh, he brought a bunch of men with him. You think that won't make us stink if we kick him out? Hijikata was right. He didn't like it any more than Nokita did, but they were all in tight spot. Well, damn! Aren't you supposed to be the demon? The commander from hell? You're supposed to make the impossible happen! Fine, Soshi. How about we make you commander? Then you can kick Ito and his guys out, right? Ha! Hell no! That's way too much trouble! He gave a grin as he laughed, but... He fin as he finished, he sighed and his face fell. It looked like everyone was unhappy with Ito, but none of them knew quite what to do about him. You dislike Ito too, Saito. I'd noticed earlier, but he kept quiet while the others commiserated, and I was curious about what he thought. He looked at me for a moment, then spoke. An organization grows. As an organization grows, it will expand to include people who have differing ideas and points of view. Then, he was supporting Ito's appointment to deputy commander? I was about to ask when he continued speaking. However, if one attempts to force this sort of diversity, then the organization will begin to rot from within. His words hung in the air, a dark omen for the future of the Chiefs and Gumi. It was considerate of Ito to join, but his presence seemed to be a recipe for decision, if not outright disaster. Yep, shit's going down. The sun glowed. The setting sun glowed through the windows with a warm, rich red, and we decided to move outside in the hope that it might raise our spirits. It's cold. Despite the sun, it seemed that the spring was still far away. It, I wasn't too fond of, fond of Ito, but it was Sam and his condition that truly worried me. I really wish his arm would just heal. That arm, or perhaps more ac accurately the lack of it, had been the source of his change in personality. Still... As nice as it would be for Senna's arm to simply start working again, it seemed like uh, uh, that seemed like the stuff of a child's fable, not real life. That was when I remembered. If push comes to shove, you'll have to take it. I don't Senna is just going to give up. Don't jinx him, Soji. It's going to look bad if the officer starts joining the court. Seems in giving her sort of something. I didn't know what it exactly, uh, what it did exactly, or even what sort of thing it was, but from the way they all talked about it, there was some, uh, there was some manner of very unpleasant side effects. Now, wait, I do remember something. Yes, from what I heard, it seemed that the capacity to heal wounds and had something to do with the corpse. It's also something I'm not supposed to know about. If they learned about, uh, how much I picked up and what I put together on my own, I had no doubt it would be, I would be in serious trouble. It was uh, possible that they would even kill me. So, if I could figure uh, any of it out, perhaps I could do something to help. I'm the daughter of a well-educated doctor after all. I like to think that I have uh, a little more knowledge of medicine than the average person. Hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to take a rather long break, and now I gotta get my tea. Give me a sec. There we go. And, um, yeah, that was, I took a long break, but, uh, we were at this choice. This choice. And I'm gonna just see which one, uh, uh, d makes things okay to but for now, let's just check out this. 
night had almost fallen, so I had decided to investigate. Now, where should I start? My room was in the Yagi house, which was where the captains lived. It had taken me a while, but I'd managed to figure out uh, how to navigate the building. Still, there was plenty of rooms that I didn't dare to go near, such as Hikikata's. There's uh, the Makikawa house. On the other side, uh, side of the grounds was the Makikawa house, which was where the uh, soldiers stayed generally to serve to several a room. Several to a room. I rarely went there, so it was largely unknown to me. <clears throat> if I was going to start a look around, the Yaki house. I'm gonna find Okita. It was night time at the Yagi house and completely silent. I felt a little guilty for sneaking around, so I tiptoed down the halls as quietly as possible. Huh? Had my eyes been ears been playing tricks on me or had someone just walked into the common room? I would be in trouble if someone saw me, so I did my best to blend into the shadows and hide. Oh god, computer is really not having this. <laughs> oh, a few moments. Oh, inside was Salmon. Something was wrong. I was at a loss. Should I speak to him or... I couldn't like mate. Mm. I'm gonna go back and see if... I can meet Okita. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, San and Han. If I can't meet Okita, then I'm gonna go back. I go back, and, um... Then I'll go back, and I'll check out things, and... Oh god, didn't I save? Oh my god. I'm stupid. I really am an idiot. Like, I haven't been an idiot in a while, but that was idiotic. That was really idiotic. I guess what I wanted was that I could go back a couple of screens. Yeah, I could, probably could have. Oh, na na. Mm. Sometimes you just need to be an idiot, you know? Sometimes you gotta do some idiotic things. So. Yeah. Ito, you're not very nice. You kinda fucked with Senan and made him even more angry. It's already pretty, pretty sensitive guy, you know? Oh my god, stop it. <sighs> okay, give me a second, then I'll be back. <laughs> okay, let's try to return to our room. No, you know what, let's first of all, save. <laughs> that's gonna, that's gonna help us in the long run. It's gonna help us a lot. Save, yes, please. Let's try to investigate and go to the uh, Makigawa house to see if we can find somebody there. Oh, sorry for skipping. Now, what's next? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Excuse me. Good evening, Shifu. What are you up to? I hope you aren't trying to escape. <laughs> no, I'm not. I haven't, it hadn't even crossed, escape hadn't even crossed my mind, although he wasn't likely to approve of my intentions, leaving the compound certainly wasn't among them. Really? Alright, fine. I mean, what would you do here by yourself anyway? You're right. It was a depressing thought, but he was right. Even if I did somehow manage to escape the Shinsengumi, I would lose my best chance at fighting my father. Well, whatever you're doing, you should not get off. Kids shouldn't be playing around in the middle of the night. Playing? My shaky attempt at a protest only drew a laugh from Akita. Well, if you see something scary, just make sure to scream, alright? Uh, right away, alright? Huh? You sound rather serious for a moment. Don't try to deal with it yourself, okay? You, don't, you understand what I'm saying? Um, what do you mean by something scary? What could I run into in the Shinsengumi's headquarters that could be scary? He looked almost surprised for a moment and then his face broke into a grin. Oh, you know, like a nightmare or a ghost or something. Hey, who knows, you might run into our commander, the demon. That does sound scary. Especially running into the demon. 
<laughs> if you two could have found out I was walking around the compound without permission. I I'm going back to my room now. Good girl. I'll just go finish uh, patrolling in the inner courtyard then. One with one last small smirk in my direction, he turned and left. My shoulders sagged with relief, and I heavily leaned against the wall. How long was he there? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. There was no way I could get into the Makagawa house without Okita catching me at it. Still, I worked up the courage to get this far. I wasn't about to let it go to waste. Hmm. Perhaps it would be better if I just snuck in, stuck, uh, into the Yagi house instead and made sure not to go anywhere near where Hichikata might be. Wait, I've been so surprised I haven't stopped to think. Why was Okita up so late? It almost seems as if he was waiting for someone to leave the Yagi house. But there was no way he could have known I would try. If not me, then who? It was night time. Okay, we're doing this. I'm glad I can both talk to Okita and get Okita points and still. Inside was Stana. Something felt wrong. I was at a loss. Should I speak to him or before I could make up my mind, he turned. I never thought it would be you who would catch me. How unexpected. Huh? I had no idea what he meant, but the, his, ex his expression caught me off guard. He had a peaceful smile, something I hadn't seen on his face for. I didn't know how long. It was a bit too peaceful, as if all his worries had suddenly left him. S Sanan! San! The moonlight glinted momentarily off something in his hand. You're wondering what this is, I imagine. He held it up as he spoke. It was a tiny glass bottle filled with a crimson liquid that looked to me like poison. This is a secret uh, treatment developed by your father, Koda, under orders of, uh, from the Shogunate. What? Shogunate ordered my father to do something? They say it first appeared in the West. The contents of this tiny vial can utterly transform a person. What do you mean by utterly transform? To put it simply, it makes them stronger and heightens their abilities. If that was true, then. There is, however, a rather serious flaw. His smile twisted only a little. It was, I suppose you could say, it was too strong. It worked as, an ap as advertised, but drove those who benefited from it mad. You've seen the results, haven't you? <laughs> of course. I've seen the result of the madness the night I first met the Shinsengumi. Yes, I see that you understand. His eyes thinned, and he almost seemed pleased. They were no longer they were no longer capable of uh, what uh, one might call rational thought, and they were little more than bloodthirsty monsters. How horrible! What had happened to the soldiers I'd seen was terrible, but what pressed uh, most heavy on my mind was a single question. Even if it were an order from the Shogun, why did my father have to be involved in such an awful thing? I struggled to process it, but then I only kept talking. If they lose control uh, whenever they see blood, then they're hardly much use in battle, are they? No matter how po powerful or unkillable they may be. Kodo conducted experiments on the corpse during the development of his treatment. No! My father conducting experiments on human beings that made men go mad at the sight of blood? I didn't want to believe it. I couldn't believe it. I tried to speak, but my chest had grown so tight I could scarcely breathe. Senan didn't... Uh, Either didn't notice or didn't care. Unfortunately, when he disappeared, his research was put on hold. This vial here represents the fruits of my own personal research, based on what he left behind. He gave me a small smile and shook the bottle gently. The liquid inside flushed from side to side almost lazily. I diluted it as much as possible. I had so many questions to ask him, but I didn't even know where I might start, so I simply spoke the first that came to my mind. If you... Drink that. Will you be okay? It won't make you go crazy. His brows knit for a moment. To be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure. I've never tested it on anyone. 
Although human testing was hardly something I would have condoned, it was clear that he had very little idea of what the concoction might actually do to him. His smile faded. If I take this, my arm will heal. That is, of course, assuming I've mixed it correctly. You mean you actually consider taking it? He had no guarantee it wouldn't simply kill him outright. And even if he did survive, it might as well drive him, drive him insane. You don't need to do that! A substance that could turn one well into a bloodthirsty monster was dangerous enough, but a new version of that substance still unfinished. I have no choice. This is the only way to heal this damned arm. Sudden exploded and I felt myself instinctively recoil from him. I'm already useless here. Even the men have begun to speak ill behind my back. That isn't true! You're a kind man, son, and everyone loves you! Even though he'd, uh, he'd been depressed, none of the captains had avoided Sen and had tried to exclude him. They were his friends, and they were just waiting for him to get back on his feet. How could you even think that you're useless to them? You should never think that! There is no life for me as a swordsman. You would ask me to continue in some sort of undeath. His smile was cold, and perhaps a little sad. Let me die as a person as well. No! Strained with emotion, my voice broke and I cried out. Sanan looked at me and sighed. What special concern is it of yours to even be me? I still felt his tone soften despite his words, and he gave me a smile that could have been plucked from the days before his wound or when I first met him. If I succeed, then my arm will be prepared for the odds again. Against success are ter as terrible as you think. As he was doing his best to tell me not to worry, but... He had made mistake in mixing the compounds of his, of his research was flawed somehow. There was no way to know what might happen to him. I kind of want to pursue at him, but I know if I scream, Okita is the one who will come, probably. Oh my god, and if I scream, I just seem like a really annoying little girl. I don't think I can do it. Oh my god. What do you do in these situations? You save. Save a lot. Well, I'm still in Okita's route, so it can't be totally awful. <laughs> Sudden had come to hate himself for being unable to fight alongside his com comrades and friends, even if they forgave him. He could never forgive, forgive himself. But... I doubt you can understand. Was it the sort of thing only a fellow swordsman could comprehend them? How could I convince him to listen to me? It was then, in the moment of helplessness, that I remembered Okita's words. If you see something scary, just make sure you scream right away, alright? Okita! Of course. I could never know what Sanan felt, but another man devoted to the sword might. might. I'd seen Okita near the entrance earlier. Perhaps he was still nearby. Okita! But even as I cried out, Sanan drew his head back and drained the vial in his sight in a single jolt. No! With the sword, the soft finger flares rolled from Sanan's palms to the floor of the, uh, the common room. I don't know if the single heartbeat I heard was mine or his. There was a moment of silence. Then, without warning, Sanan screamed in agony and collapsed on the floor, his hand clawing mindlessly at his face. Ugh! His hair began to turn white. Sweat made tons of tiny ripples down his face, and his fingers uh, dug into his skin, just short of drawing blood. Sanan, you have to hold on! His eyes spun in their sockets, tried to focus on me, and his screams died away. Halfway to him, he stopped. I could see reason draining for him, but even more terrifying, I saw something in, uh, in, his, uh, in his eyes. Something I hadn't seen since the night I first arrived in Kyoto. Behind me, I heard the door slide open. And this, sir, uh, that, uh, the, the, the recorder stop. Okay, sir, you. Good evening, Sanam. His eyes flicked from Sanam to the bottle on the floor, and then, almost as an afterthought to me. Thanks for the heads up, Chisler. Yay! Ha! <laughs> um, Okita, seven is... 
Yes, she's right. This is. Uh, this experiment was a failure. Agita, I hate to impose, but if you could, last small attempt at humor made him so pitiful that it was almost more than I could bear. Then I looked up to Agita. His face was pale and tight, his mouth a thin line and set jaw. He forced an attempt at a grin, but there was almost pain in his smile and humor. Don't worry, I'll help you die. What? In a smooth, deliberate motion, Agita held his, laid his hand on the hilt of his sword, his finger curling delicately around it, uh, one by one. My body shook with what might have been a sob. You're not serious, are you? You aren't really gonna kill him, are you? I took a step uh, toward him, but his cold eye sh uh, shivered towards mine at first. Knock it off, you aren't a part of this, so keep your mouth shut. I'm the part, but I'm... Um... The what? You think you're a part of the shins and Gumi? He didn't even move, but, move, but his tongue was like a slap. I'd been living with them for so long that my initial fear had almost completely disappeared. I felt like I found a place for myself. If you've already forgotten that, we neither mind you. I knew what was coming. We only keep you alive because you're useful. You are not one of us. He was right. I wasn't one of them. I was all alone. I opened my mouth to speak, but nothing came out. Okita held my gaze for a moment longer than looked away. What could I say? Okita sat on the floor I stood on. They all seemed so far away. Yeah! <laughs> Sana's white hair shook as his body writhed in pain. Okita's feet shifted into a fighting stamp and his grip tightened on his blade. They were almost close enough uh, for me to touch, but... It felt as if they were somewhere very far away, in another world. <coughs> All I could see was Okita's back. Then there was something red. It looked like blood. I wonder what Okita's face looked like at that moment, but I only knew the person who cr crumbled silently on the floor to the floor near. Salam! Blood had already began to puddle beneath him, spread across the floor like a deep red tide. I'd barely taken a step when Okita's arm appeared in front of me. Stay away from him. What? But why? You didn't owe me anything, at least... Uh, least of an explanation, but this was just... Okita's eyes met mine, hard and cold. Stay away from him. I hurt him pretty bad. But I don't know what the shit did to him. He might still be able to attack you. Huh? What I did to him isn't enough to kill him. Not after he drank that stuff. He's not gonna die. Oh, thank goodness! I felt the relief wash over me like the morning sunlight. Even immobilized by Okita, however, Salon was still unstable. If he lost control again, I had no doubt Okita would strike him down. But even so, Salon was alive! I let that truth fill me, and I sank, exhausted to the floor. Salon fainted. Woken by my voice, several of the captains burst into the room. They all began to talk at once, but I didn't hear them. I was so tired that so much uh, had happened. If I could just lay down. When I woke, I found myself in my room, Okita sitting across from me. You can really be a pain, you know that? Oh. With my body and mind rested, I began to recall more of what had happened the night before. After I'd passed out, Okita had carried me back to my room. How about you explain what was going on last night? Why were you in there with Sana? Okita had never been particularly pleasant uh, to me, but his tone was even harsher than I'd grown accustomed to. I felt like there was someone in the common room. For a moment I contemplated trying to lie to him, but I dismissed that almost immediately. He would see right through me. I was curious, so I had a look. I found Sana on the side. Okita nodded, but his eyes said, uh, narrowed, but he said nothing. Uh, his eyes but said nothing. Oh my god. <laughs> um, although my mind had cleared somewhat, it was so difficult to keep my thoughts organized. One, however, rose quickly to the sur surface. Is it true that my father had something to do with that? That stuff Sana drank? Sana tell you that. His voice was even colder. I nodded. What was the point to lying now? He said it makes you stronger, but it drives you mad. Okita looked at me for a while longer, his eyes searching me for something. 
At last he sighed, and I saw his shoulders relax. You're the daughter of the man who made that stuff, and you've seen what it happens to the men who go crazy. I suppose you do have the right to know. It'd just be easier to just kill you, but I do know. His tone was light, but there was no, uh, but it was no idle threat. I had no illusions about his capacity, both physical and emotional, to end my life if he saw fit to do so. So, you got any questions? I suppose I, I suppose I can answer one. Um, I hadn't expected such a rabbit, uh, such a rabbit about face, and I struggled for a moment to put my voice together. Why did the Shinsen Gumi get involved in something like this? It seemed like an almost foolishly simple question, but Okisa didn't bother to mark me for it. Well, you know that our job isn't as simple as rounding up Ronan and bringing them back to the authorities, right? Yeah. I'd been with them on patrol, and I'd seen firsthand the hardships the Shinsen Gumi faced. Most Ronan were desperate, and being faced with the rest made them even more so. Often, an arrest turned into an all-out fight. When we started out, we were really short on men. He added, not anymore, with a laugh. After uh, Ikidaya, the Shinsengumi recruitment rates had shut up. Anyway, we didn't have many people asking to join, and those uh, that did were pretty disappointing. That was when some guy from the Shogun Shogunate showed up and, offen uh, and offered to make us a part of this experiment. They could hardly say no to the Shogun, even if they wanted to. Still, such an arrangement would seem... Uh, it would have seemed beneficial to both parties. Shogunate got that treatment, and the Shinsen Gumi had a sol solution uh, to the low number and quality of their troops. Then, he knew what side effects there were, and he still made them take it. He smiled. We didn't make them take it. It was their choice. Usually, if you break our rules, uh, we make you cut yourself open. But for these guys? Wait, what? I heard the Shinsen Gumi took their code very seriously, but this? Ritual suicide seemed a little extreme. For these guys, we gave them a choice. Kill yourself, or drink the Shogun's uh, concoction. He laughed as if it was something about it was funny. You get it? Don't you feel bad for them? I couldn't think of anything to say. What sort of choice was that? A certain death by your own hand, or madness, or madness and death by someone else? The, ma the men I'd encountered that winter night. Had their last thought as men been hopes that they might survive the madness? sounded horrible. Something that makes you strong and hard to kill should be really great, right? Sure, uh, sure, so long as you don't mind the side effects. The smile never left his face, but I could see the spark of anger in his eyes. Although he'd never said much, he was worried for Sanon. I was worried too. Is Sanon okay? Would he... change? My stomach twist was twisting itself into knots. I have to end the episode here. I will see you in the next one. Bye!